Mic check. One, two, three. Come on. Mama said there'll be days just like this. Let's get it, baby. Happy Friday to you and you and you. Yep. They say ain't no party like a cowboy party. But what about a Law Nation groove? From my studio to yours and yours trolley. Thank everybody for tuning in. The name is Law Nation. There's the room filler all the way up. Be sure, and I mean just that, be sure to smash upon the like button. Let's get it. Yo, 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 come on. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. The name is Law Nation as we continue to grind and shine. Uh, be sure to hit the like, share this content, let a friend or a neighbor know where to go when they want to tune in to Cowboys Sports Talk and Beyond. Of course, there's news out there. Now, I don't think that we would dance, right? <laughs> I don't think we do a lot of dancing in the trade. So I know the trade deadline is right around the corner. Just to be real with y'all, I don't think we do a lot of dancing. We, we, um, what's the word? We like, no, 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 no. We love our guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. We like our guys. We like our guys. That's the word. And that's just what it is, unfortunately, right? So uh, that's just what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not being Nancy negative about this. That's just how it goes, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. But there's always good for speculation for the nation, uh, Dez Bryant out here, he's advocating, hey, Cowboys, go get go get Tay. Go get Devontae Adams, you know. And there's history, tangible history of Devontae Adams and Mike McCarthy. So there's chemistry, tangible chemistry that you can say, well, if we're having a little hiccups with the offense, well, it's just seemed too great to be true. And there's history on both sides of it, right? What's Al Davis' son? You know, Al Davis' son is the owner of the Raiders. And Jerry Jones and Al Davis are not like this. They like this. And if there's any favor for a favor, that could be all said and done, right? Like tomorrow, literally, there could be news that can hit the airways, you know? Breaking news, the Cowboys to sign Devontae Adams, you know, to a nice, comfortable deal. And there will be no love loss. It will be a favor for a favor. It will be just that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. So it, it, sometimes it can be too good to be true. Ladies and gentlemen, it can be too good to be true. And on the flip side, shout out to the people that's on Facebook. Shout out to you, Keith Taylor. Salute to you, my Mr. Cowboy Nation. Appreciate you. Al Kareem, 100%. Appreciate you. Uh, Cliff, thank you. Diana, appreciate you. Appreciate everybody. JT, appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to all of the automatic crews over there in the sniper game. Appreciate y'all, man. You know, all I ask. Come on, man. I appreciate y'all. You know, let, let the room fill up a little bit more. <laughs> yes, indeed. So it'll be like, too good to be true, right? And we already know the forces is against us. I heard that, uh, what's the guy named uh, Roger Goodell? He got a $700 million contract. 
I mean, the man got his own money. The man rich. I ain't broke no more, but I would still chop you up and feed you to the poor. <laughs> W-L-O-J. We like our guys. Yes, indeed. So it's one of those things that the Cowboys, we are right in the, in the thick of it or in the middle of it, whereas the trade deadline is right around the corner, right? And, and, and just like they say, I'm straight up out the corner. It's going to be a miracle, they say, to see again and breathe again. But anyway, you know, I get back on my feet. You know, it's one of those things, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Devontae uh, Adams will cause a king's ransom. Oh, career earning is $700 million. Uh, Willie T said uh, Devontae will call a king's ransom. Yeah, True Fawley says, hold on, hold on. He got the corrections for the nation over here. He said it will, it will cost uh, his career earnings is about that. Let me see if I can uh, pull it up so we can, you know, be on the right page with everything. I really appreciate you guys so, 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 so much for uh, tuning in. Uh huh. So he's a billionaire by now. You know, by his next wave of his contract, he'll be a billionaire. Let me see if I can find that 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 that, that actual quote right here. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we want to be uh, correct. We don't want to get hit with misinformation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. You know, Hail Mary. What do we have here? Yeah, 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 yeah. 700 million, his career. Okay, my bad, my bad. I was speeding y'all false information right here. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell's and contract extension has been signed and finalized per Kaplan Sports Biz. It's set to run from... 2027, right? All the way to that time. And it brings his career earnings roughly around $700 million. We're not talking about the money that he get paid under the table. <laughs> the money that Roger Goodell is like getting like, you want me to call what? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all I got to do is get rid of Dean Blandino. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'll make it happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't y'all come after me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Adams is a number one wide receiver. I don't see him coming to Dallas. And, and this is from uh, my girl Brandy. Here, here's my thoughts on this, Brandy. The Dallas, we can't have nothing good. We can't have nothing good. Every time we get something good, we got to get rid of it. Right? That just, unfortunately for us, other teams can go out there and get them two number ones. We can see that the, uh, not the Washington team, but the Rams, the L.A. Rams, they were struggling a little bit with their wide receiving core. And they said, look, let's go get Odell Beckham Jr. on their way to the Super Bowl. Right? They, they, we can't have good stuff over here. It's always a hater because I think the hater is this dude right here. You know, right? <laughs> Roger Goodell. I, I, I remember back in the days, you know, I'm a, a, a Laker guy too, and it was a possibility for us to uh, get, I think it was um, Chris Paul. And the commission was like, nah, you know, it'll be too much uh, 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 popularity and too much good stuff. I was like, wait a minute. How are you going to step in and block? So I think the NFL do it on the same level, right? All of a sudden, you know, we on a roll. We 2-0. and oh. Of course, we have some emotional damage. And then we get the most penalized team out there. I'm talking about the aficionados. A hitman squad. You know, they had over 14 penalties. You know, uh, the flags, it was just throwing flags left and right to equalize the game. You know, that's just what it is, man. But neither here nor there. Uh, I, know, I know you guys came here for, for the convo. And uh, before we dive into this, Last night I raised a question, and I know most of you guys don't. Most of you guys don't um, watch the. Uh, me and my brother, we was live last night when we talked about the Saints versus the Jags, and I brought this up last night, and I asked a legitimate question. It's about this right here. Currently, the NFL wide receivers number one that Marvin Harrison Jr. would start over. And I asked, is he really cold-blooded like that? I looked up some of his highlights. I didn't, I didn't do no film study yet. But I said, damn, this dude is good. 
And as they said that he would start over DJ Moore, Jerry Judy, Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, D.K. Metcalf, Nico, uh, 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 Amon, the Sun God, basically, Adam Thielen, Chris Olave, George Pickens, Mike Evans, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, my goodness, man, the list goes on. Drake London, Hollywood Brown, Michael Pittman, the junior, Darius Slayton, Christian Watson, Zay Flower, and Scott Moore. I said, God, dog, is, the, is he really? Because I want to know. I need to know, ladies and gentlemen, would Marvin Harrison Jr. start over these guys correctly? And is he really that good? You know, I just need to know from the audience today, you know, on this beautiful Friday, is he really that good? Because instead of selling King's Ransom, for Devontae, you know, Adams, maybe you can give up something else. Maybe you can paint the picture and say, hey, Raiders, we would give you X, Y, and Z draft pick. You can use those draft picks, move up, and you can get your guy right here both ways. You can go get Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, y'all keep losing. Hey, you you will have more firepower, you know, to, to package up some picks, get him. Yes, indeed. Appreciate y'all so much for jumping in. unrealistic trades. How about defensive tackle Simmons from the Titans? Who would you start him over? Like, will he literally starts over Osa? Because he would have to switch over to being a one-tech. Simmons here, and they play him, they kind of play him on a a three-tech side, even though he can give you some one. Uh, Hey, more the merrier, but, you know, it's just going to be one of those things. I'm not saying not make that that move on Simmons. JT says Marvin is legit. Yeah. Yeah. But but before we get into the defensive side, let's talk about what Chad Ocho Cinco said. Chad Johnson presented a compelling argument in favor of the ideal of Devontae Adams joining the Dallas Cowboys through a trade on the volume show. The late, the, 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 the late night cap, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they got the, the late night cap over there, the night cap. And uh, that's with Shannon Sharp. And then Johnson is also advocating the possibility of Adam being traded to the Cowboys, which would ultimately put the Cowboys in Super Bowl favorites, right? And provide Jerry Jones with a special dynamic player to push us over the hump. Push us over the hump. So let's listen to this right quick. You said you wanted to see see Devontae in Dallas. Oh yeah, talk to me now. Yeah. So so if if, yeah. if CD hold on, is CD gonna give up that eighty eight? Because the eighty eight is supposed to be special. Devontae is, Adams walks in the door. He, so it's if special. he walks in the door, who's gonna do? Rem, now you do remember this, Ocho? They yes, got sir. rid of Amari Cooper, yeah. so CD could be number one. Without, without, without no, no, anybody no. challenging him. No, nope, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not why. That's not why. That was a business. Deci- that was a business decision because Jerry how that Jones business decision working out for Jerry, Jerry Jones didn't want to pay that twenty million dollars. That's what it came from. He already paid it. Look at Gallup. So, so tell me. So now everybody's saying they need a number two receiver. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me bring some context to this. Chad Ocho Cinco. Two things can be true. Jerry Jones didn't want to pay ultimately Amari Cooper's salary because you never want to, excuse my French, piss off a man who makes a lot of money. Those are words coming from Jerry Jones mouth to a lot of people ears and even though he didn't say that directly to Amari Cooper but it's already implied did you get the shot did you get the shot I don't want to get the shot well everybody else getting the shot 
I'm Jerry Jones. You going to defy me? You going to, you going to, you, you think you bigger than me? I'll have you play football in Pelican Bay. Oh, they all take it up? Well, I'll ship you off to Cleveland. And we will still win 12 games the next season. 48 laws of power. And one of the laws over there is never outshine your master. Now, I ain't saying that Jerry Jones is running this thing like a plantation. Don't get it twisted. But there's rules. There's rules to this. There, matter of fact, for those who don't understand, there's codes to this. And if you defy the code, regardless of who you are, I will try to break you. And that's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. But two things can be true. Jerry ultimately didn't want to pay the man as well, you know. Although Amari Cooper took less money to play in Dallas, he could have been six and a half million dollars richer because the Washington team was willing to open up that wallet. Let's listen to the rest of this, ladies and gentlemen. Now you see Amari Cooper balling. Yeah, Boom. yeah. It was nothing. It was nothing wrong with him in the first place. There oh, oh, oh! I got to add this too. Some of the money that could have been applied to Amari Cooper's whatever the money would have been could have been given to him easily. Write this down. People do what they want to do. People do what they want to do, and he didn't want to pay that. Plus. Looked like someone else shunned him. So he gave that money to a person who's been injured every single year of his career. And he wears 13. He's been more hobbled and hurt than Amari Cooper. He have less skill sets and abilities than Amari Cooper. Michael Gallup is a real good dude. A real good guy. He's the type of guy, if you have a daughter, you wouldn't mind him dating her. He's going to open the door. He's going to not hit her. He's going to pay for the meal. He's going to put good roof over the head of her. He's going to do great things for her. Good guy on and off the field. But he's been hurt every year. I got a super chat. Salute to the Super Chat. Sanjay says, Stephen A. Smith and the rest of the media are scared punks for not critiquing Jerry and the Catboy, you right? They want to talk about the Cowboys' failure, but never address the real problem. Well, they know who butters the bread all the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you, Sanjay. Appreciate you. There was no need to there was no need to get rid of him. You got rid of him because you didn't want to pay the money. You didn't want to pay the money and you felt you were gonna get the production from elsewhere or something close to it. That's not the case why? for someone yeah. that good. I think why can't CDC the same thing? Why can't he see the vision? Jerry Jones, Jerry do wait, Jerry Jones always wanna be front and center. He wanna be the GM, he wanna be the president, he wanna be the custodian, he wanna be the janitor, he wanna run the show and the brand. The Cowboys, you haven't won a Super Bowl in how long? So why not make a splash? And why oh, not Joe. bring in that splash and having Devontae Adams and improving your offense drastically just like that and becoming a goddamn Super Bowl favorite? Let Talk me ask you a question, Ocho. Why not? At the, okay, at what year were you in your career when that happened? You do realize you had already gone to six Pro Bowls. You had already mm -hmm. been, you had already led the league in receiving. You had yeah. already been an all pro. Yeah. CD Lamb hasn't been to as many Pro Bowls. He mm. hadn't accomplished the things. So he's not going to be as willing a participant mm. as you to concede. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought the common goal was to get the Lombardi Trophy. It's
the truth shall set you free. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. There's no I in team. There's an I in win, though. And when you win, you win as a team. I won should be the name of the game. Because even with C.D. Lamb and Devontae Adam, he can still say, hey, I'm doing my best out here. I'm getting the unbelievable attention. Now, Devontae Adams is a dog. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. He is by far your number one, number two, number three wide receiver in the National Football League. I haven't seen a route that he can't run. I haven't seen a ball that he can't really bring down and catch. And then he's hungry. So if you want to stand tall and say, hey, I lowered myself so that he can come here. Because all you need is the ring. You see, so many times some of these guys may look at it like Shay Sharp is looking at it, talk, talking about. CD Lamb wears 88 and he's trying to X, Y, and Z. You know what? It was necessary for Michael Irvin to have Alvin Harper on the team. It was necessary for Michael Irvin to have Troy throwing him the ball, for Emmett to be the running back. And we can go on and on and on, even in the days of Drew Pearson. 88 still going to get his shine, but the Cowboys can't have the mindset that we only need one wide receiver that can stand tall. Yes, I like what Brandon Cooks is doing too, by the way. He's giving more opportunities. But man, it would be even greater if the Cowboys go and utilize that one, one deal. What you gonna do with the money? You holding on to the money. We gotta pay his, we gotta pay that. Don't worry about that. Tomorrow gonna take care of itself. It's about winning. Press says, law. Where you at, Press? He says, law, if they can pull this off, OMG, they really will hate the Cowboys. Oh, my goodness. You know, Roger Goodell going to jump in. <laughs> Roger Goodell going to show up and say, hey, wait a minute. Now, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If they pull it off, man, it will be... Monumental. Man, stop that, Ocho. Stop whoa, 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 that. listen to me, listen to me. Is that not what we preach about all the time? Oh. There is there is one team, listen to me now, there's one team <laughs> that moves the needle in all media. One team that moves the needle. And every year it's the same, it's the same conversation. We have the talent, we have the players, we have the personnel to go to Subo, and they continue to fall short every year. Mm. Why not add that one special dynamic that can put you over the hump offensively? Why not? I, oh, Ocho, I, I'm, 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 I'm not saying. Not dis- I'm speaking hypothetically. Okay, Ocho, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you, mm-hmm. but you know, people say I want to win, but right. 95 for people want to win, but they want to win their way. You know that. Wait, so are you talking about Jerry Jones? Is is that I, his, no, his no, way? I, Man, y'all check out their show. That's the rest of it. That's the end of it. But y'all check out their show on the Volume Sports, and it will be under the Nightcap section, or go to uh, YouTube and type in the Nightcap, and you will see the uh, full information there as far as their show or what have you, ladies and gentlemen. Frank, Frank Sinatra said, you know, he did it his way. I'll do it my way, you know. And he had a whole nice little soliloquy talking about the things that he's done and the things that he want to do. And he said he would do it his way. Well, I did it my way, you know. So he lived life, but he did it his way. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Jerry Jones won the Super Bowl or had a team that he owned won a Super Bowl without Jimmy Johnson. But when he lifted up that Lombardi trophy, people hit him with the truth and said, you know what? You may have won that Super Bowl with Barry Switzer. You may have got a chance to ultimately show him up. But technically, that is still Jimmy Johnson's Super Bowl. Because the players are whispering that they had to win in spite of the coaching. They had to pull information and resources from the source. And Jerry acts, telling a quick story here. Well, damn, who's the source? Because I'm the source. No. Jimmy Johnson was the source. Those boys won in spite of the coaching staff that you presented to the table. And he had been tracing, chasing, I meant to say, chasing, been chasing that ghost since then. That's why I say you learn more from your failures than your success. But sometimes your success can be your failures if you didn't get it out of the mud the right way. Show of hands that that happened happened to someone. You never understood the reason why you did something. And then when it was time for you to do it, by you cheating or by you taking the shortcut route, not prepared, it takes you even longer. You see, the whole point of having an open book test is for those who really study. For those who really study, when it's time to have the open book test, they finish the test within 10 to 15 minutes. For those who didn't study, they think it's an open book test. All of the answers is in there, and they still don't pass because they didn't study. They in there for like 45 minutes to an hour. And the whole time, the educator, the teacher, the person with the knowledge of the situation is grinning and smiling because now they get a chance to see you operate mentally. And they already know this person didn't study. Some get by and pass the open book test. But those who didn't study, nine times out of ten, they don't pass the test. Brandy says, Jerry wants to win his way so he can say, I did it my way. Facts, law. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Put a heart by that. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Shout out to your truth only for 26 months. Appreciate you. So when we start talking about these type of things, Jerry have every possibility to pull some triggers and reclaim and redeem his legacy. He's going to die being there anyhow. He got wealth. His money making money. He's not a failure. He got a gold jacket. He's in the Hall of Fame. The man got his own money too. What else do you want? Oh, you want to say I did it my way right now, Jerry? Pull the trigger. Because what Chad Ochocinco said, technically, two things can be true. We always had talent over here. Even before Will McClay got here, we had talent. But just because you got the items doesn't mean that when it's time to cook, that it's going to taste good. A chef is going to go into that same kitchen that's at your home and can prepare a meal. And you be like, mm, I wish I can cook like that. Law, where are you going with, at it with this? Slow down just a little bit, Law. Let me get my notepad out, Law. 
Well, well, where I'm going with it is that, baby, this is the first time that we got a chance and opportunity with coaching staff. I get it. Right now, a lot of people looking at Mike McCarthy saying that he can't coach, he's horrible, et cetera. But collectively, even at his horrid stage and his pathetic stage to most, we are far better than what we were previously with Jason Garrett, with Wade Phillips. The last time we had a coach of this kind of caliber was Bill Parcells. And even he was banging on the table saying, come on, man, let me just at least cook. Let me cook. Don't bring this guy in. Don't bring that guy in. Let me work. Get out of my hair. Get out of the kitchen. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Too many ants telling bees how to make, make how to make honey. Come on. Burnett says, uh, we are dreaming if we think Jerry will do the right thing for this team. Pride cometh before the great fall. Songs Jerry Jones up perfectly. Or sums Jerry Jones up perfectly. I see you. I feel you. That's why I say trade deadline wishful thinking, right? We we hoping. We hoping. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jeremy says uh, Gallup should have never been re-signed. All right, so let's talk about this right here. Lowest passer rating allowed by a cornerback this season. You got Witherspoon. I see Deron Bland, uh, number two on this list. And then I strolled all the way down. I'm seeing number six, Stephon Gilmore. One can argue and say, well, we got two guys within the top five or top ten category on this particular list, Law. Why do you have Patrick Sertan on this sheet? Why do you have him in the mix? We should be good. We should be okay. We should be satisfied with what we got. Sometimes when you see a, a good team like we are, you're looking for that extra piece to tip us over. And my opinion, this would be two for one if the Cowboys can figure out how to land that dynamic player like a Patrick Sertan over here in the Cowboys uniform because what this would do, this would be something for the future plus now. It wasn't by the element of we just picking up guys to be picking up guys. When the LA Rams went and spent cash for Jalen Ramsey, they already had a dynamic player on defense. They already had an Aaron Donald, right? But they didn't stop there. They went and got a Von Miller. They went and add pieces. Didn't you guys know that since they won a Super Bowl, it took them 20 years. That's a long time. Since 99, it's a long time for the 99. So even teams that people don't talk trash upon, spit upon, and have weapons, they still had to make extra moves. And what I'm saying is before the trade deadline is ending, just make that extra move. It's going to cost you. And it appears to me that, yes, last year the Rams had a, a fall off or a drop off. One can argue it was due to injury. But I'm quite sure any of you guys would trade one bad year to win a Super Bowl. That's all I'm saying. I could be a million percent wrong. But we are close. And if somebody can tell Jerry, hey, you got more years behind you than in front of you. Now, I do know A.I. Jones, he probably can outlive us all. <laughs> but that's the reality of it, ladies and gentlemen. It is.
Lunar Love says, I saw a rumor that the Eagles wanted Sertan. They don't have the cash, nor that was a rumor started by an unproven source. They got Bradbury and Slay. <laughs> they ain't going to bench one of those boys to put out there. Yes, indeed. Paul says, come on, all money, Jerry, pick up the phone. So we just we just putting options out there to solidify this team. When Chad Ochocinco said this team have talent year in and year out, he was right. But just because you're smart and just because you got the ability and know the ability to do certain things doesn't mean that it's going to equate. If you don't have the experience to lead something. Like I said, I use this, I use this as an example all the time. My daughter is a straight A student. She's in the second grade. Just because she's smart and intelligent for the second grade, she still can't drive the car. Right? She don't have no experience in that. Don't have no history of that. Not capable, not old enough to do that. And what the Cowboys been doing collectively over the periods of years is that they take that smart person, they take that guy that they see potential in, and they say, hey, lead this team. Lead the way. And they crash and they wreck every time. Got all of the skill sets. Got the Ferrari. Got the Aston Martin. All of that good stuff. Can't drive it. Can't pull it up a hill. There's people right now that's been driving all of their lives but never been behind a stick shift. Can't get the car up a hill. Can't get it out of the driveway. Why? I, they've been driving all of their lives. Oh, man. I can only drive an automatic. There's people right now that I can say, okay, here's a Ferrari. There's only one condition. It's the, it's the stick shift. They, they, they would have the car and just keep it in the garage or keep it, pull it, pull it out up front. <laughs> hey, that's my Ferrari right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, indeed. Sam Boston is not from CBS, ladies and gentlemen. He, he's, he's trolling y'all. And if he is, then what's going on with his account? Y'all being hoodwinked. Y'all being hoodwinked. This guy have no credentials. This is equivalent to him saying, yeah, pigs can fly. At what altitude you throwing them out of the plane on? You know what I'm saying? He don't work for CBS. That's a Photoshop picture of a car salesman with CBS in his background. Measure twice, cut once. We don't know if uh, Rashad Evans is, will start against the Rams. But we do know one thing. I want to know, is, is happy Friday to you all? We open up the phone lines. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your opinions. Yeah! Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Let's get it, baby. 657-390-7391 is the hotline for your mind. With my brothers, there's no question, keep it real. real. Whether we is coasting or we in the hills, we knew popping straps of blue faces. You are the only participant in the conference. 657 390 7391. 
It's the hotline for your mind. Happy Friday to you all. Score prediction this weekend. Cowboys winning. <laughs> Spade tournament. <laughs> Cowboys winning this weekend. All we need to do is stay clear. <laughs> I got the three, one, four. You're live on the nation. Talk to me. What's going on, Lord? This is CT Madden here. CT Madden, man. Talk to me, man. What you got on your heart, man? Uh, this is about the Monte Adams. You know, mm-hmm. his whole reason of wanting to lead the Raiders right now. They they just won two games. Yep. He mad because he's not getting the ball. Yep. Right. Right. I don't, I don't see him coming here and just getting most of the targets. Or he would still have a smaller role coming to Dallas. Right. So that would just bring more friction to the locker room for me. But I know it's a guy in Tampa that said he's not coming back to his team. Okay. And I would like to for Mike Evans. Mike Evans, Texas A and M kid, Texas native, right? You know? He's he from Texas, right? I mean, Adams or Evans, if the price is right. But here's the crazy thing, though. Uh, the the Buccaneers have been kind of like winning here and there, too, right? You know, they kind of formulating something over there. Interesting. They're winning, but what, yeah. what shot do they have in the postseason? Say that again. I said they winning their games, but what shot do, do they have in the postseason? Oh, like they they gonna sneak in fourth seed and then somebody like say, say the Eagles get seven seed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they it's gonna good. wipe them out the water. Wipe them out of the water. Now that they will argue, they gave the Eagles a little fit. You know what I'm saying? The last time they played them, True. but but I'm I'm objectively looking at this. If it was my choice between Adams and Evans. And what we already got out of C.D. Lamb, give me Evans, you see, because Adams is the future C.D. Lamb. You know what I'm saying? Like like the past C.D. Lamb, right. I meant to say. C.D. Lamb is the future Adams. That's a better way I can look at that. We and don't I have that kind like of Evans caliber. Is like a, it's like an upgraded Gallup. You, right, right. Like you hit that turbo button. Plus, you know, when Mario get the mushroom, that's who that's who Evans right. is. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Over Gallup, and I, I can absolutely see that dynamic there. You have CD and then Evans, and then you will have uh, Cooks cooking, and then you then you can say, hey, Tolbert, you know, you just sit back. And they can – you trade, I guess, Gallup to them, you know. <laughs> They're not trying to get rid of Gallup, but this is how it goes, unfortunately, you know. <laughs> it's just throwing a dead sandwich in the water, really. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, to your point with Adams, man, you know, there's ground to about a few things. He's been there last year, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you just want to get out of that environment. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't – Here, here's what I do. You still do your due diligence. You still pick up the phone. You still say, hey, what's right. going on? What can we offer you? What can we do to make it, you know – possible for you to be in the silver and blue and unfortunately that's how it goes you we, we can only look back at it and say all right yeah it will it will muddy the chemistry but one can argue that could have been the same conversational piece even with aj brown leaving the titans to go over to the eagles land right it, it could be the yeah. same situation there and i'm not saying that th- this is a similar thing but it could Argue, people can't make arguments about that. You know, sometimes it's just change of scenery. And he do have somewhat shape, form, or fashion, maybe chemistry with Mike McCarthy. It could be a thing there. And I bet if you ask Mike Evans, I grew up, I bet you he say, I grew up a Cowboys fan. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Most certainly. Most certainly. Man, what else you got for us, CT? And I, I did want to think. Uh, what you thought about going to grab the Neil Hunter or Brian Barnes as well? I'll oh, take that off the head, but yeah, yeah. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for calling in. Um, it's yeah, good, good, good convo. Uh, the Neil Hunter, I'm, I'm running, I'm running for that trade uh, to happen. Right? Uh, he, he's a 
high quality defensive edge, interior guy. He can play both. I think that he'll bring a lot of element to the team. And, and that's us leaving those stones unturned. Gr- granted, we do have an Armstrong Fowler. We do have guys like Sam Williams that need to get a few more ticks. But if you try to ultimately, like what Chad Ochocinco said, the ultimate goal is to win the Super Bowl. And going out there, making that happen, going out there, getting guys that you know for sure they are playmakers, dogs out there. And why not? Those teams that's on a fire sale. So the Vikings play the 49ers Monday night. And if they lose, the Vikings will be one and six. Shoot, they on a Caleb Williams train at that point. Fire sale. You know, I, I'll be Picking up the phone. Hey, 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 what's good? Some pieces on that defense I'll be trying to probe and pick up. I'm trying to win. We can win games left and right. We've proven that we can win regular season games. But when you get to the playoffs, playoffs, it's all about who stand tall at that point. Regardless, the quarterback going to get the shine and the glory. That just That's just how the business goes. I got the 803, you're live on the nation, brought to you by Prize Picks. You in the mix. Talk to me. What's going on, Law, man? Long time listener, bro. Follow you on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Wow. You're okay. one of my favorite contacts, man. Appreciate like, it. Bro, you, 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 speak, you speak the truth. Even when it's talked to him by a quarterback, you, you tell what he needs to do, what he should do, and what he shouldn't do, which True. some things he can't get better at, which, which he will, I hope. We hope, yeah. But I just, I just, I know we're talking about trade deadlines and whatnot, but I was just literally watching a YouTube clip about Undisputed. And the crazy thing I saw in it was Skip Bayless just literally said some bogus, some bogus stuff about Dak in 2021. Mm-hmm. This man literally said Dak QBR was 55%. I just looked it up. It was 1.4. It was 104.2. 104, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it QBR or passer rating? No, QBR. QBR, okay. So yeah. it was just, I don't understand what's really going on. Even even in our fandom. Mm-hmm. I understand, yeah, he could be better. He, he could be better. He could be 10 times better. All right. But what we have is what we have. So instead yeah. of criticizing the man and trying to drag him down, just try to uplift the man and try to be on his shoulder and try to say, hey, you can get us there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in, in every relationship, man, before people depart from their relationship, they call it the T-chart analysis, right? They draw a T, and on one side they got positive, on the other side they have negatives, right? And then you jot down all of the positive things, you know, what this person can do. Can they win games? All right, what this person, can they pass at a certain rate? Or are they eligible to make the proper decision? All right, what the negative things are, you know, do they, can they sit in the pocket? You know, those type of things that people, I believe, to that need to do, and then they go back and forth. Is, are there more positive or are there more negatives, right? How many losing seasons have we had since he's been here, right? Those type of things. And I think that even as a fan, even if you're going to be on the negative side, just, just write down, just look at the positives out of it and then move from there. Now, granted, if you move on from Dak Prescott, there could be the unknown, the element of the unknown. Mm-hmm. But if, okay. you, if you go down that pathway, there, there's many of teams to the point of no return. Yeah, they, they, you, you're 100% right about that law. <sighs> when many it comes teams. to the trade deadline, we, we, we don't have to, we don't have to do something. Uh, yeah, if, if yeah, you know, open up the wallet, or you know, if if you if if it's like pulling teeth right now, and you don't want to make that move, then you are satisfied with what this team is looking like, and you are under uh, you are falling under the hope side of it, and saying I hope that that all of a sudden the all line can get better all of a sudden the uh wide receiving core can get better all of a sudden the quarterback can make proper reason decisions and stuff like that all of a sudden the defense on certain things if they can you know you lean on that and if one thing if a person can sell that 
will be Jerry Jones. <laughs> he can give us a lot of hope, bro. <laughs> yes, it is. Why are you, why are you writing about that, Law? He can sell right. some hope, you man. Know? Yeah. Oh, what? Like, that crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I was watching the, I believe I was watching the live of you yesterday or I think it was Tuesday or something yeah. like that. We were talking about our offensive line when it comes to the trap and the push. Uh-huh. Uh, our offensive team and offensive line. Yeah. Now, do I think they can get better with it? Yes. But yeah. Like you said in that in that live, some of them might be moving a little bit more than they're used to moving. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit more harder for them to get to those blocks and get them up and push them boys up the field and get Tony what he needs or get back to the area he needs or it just I think it can work for us, but it just ah, it, it's it's difficult right now. It, because we're seeing more Zach Martin. I've never seen Zach Martin move that much. You know what I'm saying? i never seen Tyler Smith move. Tyler, they pulling. It's a pull scheme like what Coach Marv said. And I went back and I looked. It's, yeah. yeah. Trap, pull, pull, trap scheme, man. And uh, there's a lot of movement on that line. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for calling in, fam. What's your name so I can lock you in? Uh, on Facebook, uh, it's on uh, Thunderbird, but on YouTube is um, the Pool Boy House. Thunderbird slash Pool Boy. <laughs> yes, sir. All day. Appreciate you, man. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah, Thunderbird. <laughs> Thunderbird, man. All right, I got uh, 912, the Big Gibbs. But 912, you're live you're on the nation. Talk to me. Hey, how you doing, Law and the Nation? How y'all doing today? Man, we we doing great, man. Uh, how you? I'm good. I'm good. Long time listener, first time caller. So I'm, I'm, it's a privilege to talk to you. Appreciate yeah. what you're doing um, for Cowboy Nation and keep doing what you're doing. Just had a few things for you. All right. The, the, the first thing, I really don't think no matter if we acquired a free agent, a talent like Adams, if we don't take the handcuffs off of Dak, we'll win regular season games, but we're not going to go far in the playoffs. I've seen Dak right. pass for over almost 5,000 yards with limited amount of interceptions, and mm-hmm. we're treating him almost like he's a Trent Dilfer. We don't have a quarterback that you have to manage, be a game manager. We have a top eight quarterback in the NFL, and it seems like our coaching staff, it's starting to drink the Kool-Aid, and we're treating Dak like he's a game manager. Dak is a baller. He's proven. He's been in the league over eight years. Right. He's had success in the playoffs with the exception of the 49ers. He's had success against the Packers. He bought out against the Packers in the playoffs. He sent Tom Brady to retirement in the playoffs, and he sent the good Russell Wilson when he was in his prime. Yeah. He sent him home in the playoffs. So all this, oh, Dak doesn't perform, and the playoffs is bogus. We have mm-hmm. a top eight talent at quarterback. If we open up the offense and let him ball out, we'll be fine. I'll but tell you what. Let, let me say this, though. Let me jump in and say this, though. I would take that quarterback i seen versus the Buccaneers in that playoff game exactly. over 31 other quarterbacks outside of Pat Mahomes probably. You know, I would take that version of quarterback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would take that Dak Prescott, and that's the Dak Prescott we thought that we was going to get in the 49ers game exactly. last year. Exactly, exactly. But our, our coaching staff is starting to drink the Kool-Aid, and they're treating Dak like a game manager. Right. And if they want to win regular season games, we'll win 10, 11, 12 games this year. But we're going home because they want to – with this offense that we're currently running right now, we're not going to succeed. We're not going to get to where we want to go even if we acquire a, a talent like Adams. We're not going right. to go because we're not letting Dak utilize the talents that he has. Man, most certainly uh, uh, I, I think that we saw a little bit of the governor being removed – in the Chargers game in some moments, right? And when I looked at the film, right. I looked at the film, his progressions, right to left. Of course, you read high to low, but right to left uh, uh, on one play. And I was like, man, Cooks was wide open, right? But one thing right. I want Dak right. Prescott to do is to still have that mental clock if he trusts his legs, right? 
and, 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 and yeah, and, and then he ran when he ran and dove a little bit. I said, if he played like that on every series, go through his progressions, and if he don't have his one or two reads that he don't like, then he tuck it with the Mississippi State legs. I'll take that deck Inst- instead of trying to all day. yeah, instead of holding on, patting, patting, double. You know, not nah, if before he double. Just go ahead and just run it with your legs. I think that we would take that over the the first four weeks of Dak Prescott kind of double clutching it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, yeah. All day, all day. Yeah, I'm yeah. This offense is ready to He's ready. get unleashed. We're ready yeah. to just wreak havoc on every opponent that we face the rest of the season if we take the handcuffs off of Dak. I'm telling you, we have the talent. The offensive line is steady. We yeah. can improve every position on the offensive side of the ball and defense can improve. We just need to take the handcuffs off of Dak and let him ball. But that's all I have. Lord. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. What's your name so I can lock you right. in? My, my name is D. D. I'm from Florida. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to put it in there. Hold on. Cowboys. I can't, I can't say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to put pause if I'd have said that. But appreciate you. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put Cowboys, you know, his name. But i like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> the new age, you can't just say Cowboys, you know. His name that he just said. See y'all. See y'all knew if I'd have put his name at that, you know, y'all would have said, "Hey, long say Pauls." <laughs> I I got Big Gibbs, and then I have VIP. Uh, the next two, and then uh, let's rock. Let's rock. Big Gibbs, man, you live from the two four zero. Man, what's going on, Law? Man, all is well. I'm holding it down. Listen, I want to tell y'all, man. Y'all, y'all kill that final word too tonight. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I want to, I want to, I want to uh, do some. Re- this is all fantasy. If I was in charge with Jerry at, and we this close yeah. to the Super Bowl, you know, and everybody want to start having a fire sale, especially the Raiders in uh, Denver. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about the Raiders because they, you know, they say five hundred, so I don't know if yeah. they go all in yet. Yeah. But uh, Denver probably uh, go all in. So. That's what I would do if I was Jerry. Like, so I get on the phone. Mm-hmm. It don't hurt to uh, invite him in for a cup of coffee. But I put a little press on him. I tell him, hey, listen, uh, you know, uh, you give me Patrick Sertan, I give you Gallup, and then I give you a second round draft choice with it. Yeah. You know, because we need that. If we wanted a DB, I think we kind of good right now. But to solidify us for the getting to hit the playoffs, yeah. We're going to need yeah. that. And then on the offensive side, our O-line just got back together. Let me ask you this, though, before you, before you go into that. Yeah. Uh, and y'all can yeah. help me out in the chat. Judy never got paid yet, right? Judy is on the on – the, No, uh, he didn't. Well, all right, so, so, you can, got paid yet. so you can throw that in and, and, and you can literally be like, well, we'll take Judy off your hands, you know. Yeah. And, and Judy been an injury-prone guy, too. I get it, you know. But uh, if you were to tell me, okay, Judy in this offense, and I'm not throwing any shade. I like Gallup. You know, I'm not saying that he's terrible. But you got to sell him. You got to get it. You got to get it from under it. You know what I'm saying? So you'd be like, uh, I will throw you this draft pick. I'll get Patrick Sertain and, and do like an NBA type of trade. You know, and get Judy in. Get yeah. Judy in Sertain up off him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but keep going. <laughs> And I'll give you Gallup in a second, but yeah. the problem with uh, our offense right now with Gallup is that they trying to make him do something that he's not. Yeah, he's just not that slot slant guy. He's not that doggone uh, come in the middle because he's not. He's still favoring that knee. I don't know why. Been two years. Um, yeah. He's a fifty-fifty guy. That's what he was when he got here, you know, and he's good at it down the field. You know, he's like Dez. He'll, well, Dez could have probably played the slot, all that, but Gallup in that slot and in them slants, you know, he just don't run that route proper. Uh, but when you go down that field 50-50 with Gallup, uh, eight times out of ten, he'll be the defensive back. And then over on the other side with Jared Judy, uh, you got him everywhere. I mean, you know, he, he can play all any any position like CD, everybody keep talking about where CD Lamb gonna go back to, you know, share that number one. Shoot. Listen, this ain't about number one, number two, or number three when you got that kind of talent on the team. You know, Jared Judy, 
CD Lamb, Abe. I'm telling um, you, I'm telling you right now. There's on the, on that route tree. I don't. No, if there is a route that Judy can't run, <laughs> that joker nasty with it, you it's know, not. nasty with it's it. Not. And, and, and you know what would help Judy out up. too, though. You know what helped Judy out too. And you know we all team natural grass, but but you put yeah. Judy on a, a Cowboys. I know for sure eight games out of a year, Judy inside that dome. Shh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Balling. Yeah. He grew up. He grew up in Alabama playing SEC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you came to the NFL already, NFL already, just, you know, it's terrible. You don't get to pick your team, you know, when you get True. drafted, unfortunately. Uh, you know, John Elway was the only one that did that, you know, but, hey. Eli, yeah, so too, though. You got to throw Eli in there, too. He said, no, I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, Eli. Eli. <laughs> Eli, Eli <laughs> made it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but then and then on the on the defensive side, uh, uh, again over on the defensive side, you know, uh, our our stand with the offense. If we can't do Judy like that and uh, yeah. certain, then I would tell the Raiders since since you know Devonte want to be traded, disgruntled. Well, listen, we'll, we'll let's do a wide receiver swap. I give you Gallup, you give me Devonte Adams. We'll eat his contract, and I'll give you a third round draft choice to go with it. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. You you eat Gallup contract, that'll take, cause that'll take set. But Denver will have to eat. I mean, the Raiders would have to eat thirty million of uh, Devonte Adams contract. Yeah. Along with that, you know, uh, so that would take put it about even because Gallup got a seventy five million dollars contract and Devonte is a little higher. But because the Raiders would have to eat that thirty million, that would put us about even and kick them a third round draft choice with it. You know, over yeah. there with Devontae and still have Judy Sertan <laughs> come on in there, you know, with C D Yeah, no <laughs> We have an all star, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> that, hey they're they're throwing the offensive lineman too, you know, just in case. Hey, hey man, this is good uh big gives, man. That's a good that's a good point, man. Hey, I, I love yeah, us man, having I, the I uh, you, man. I'm a member yeah. of yeah, cause that that dog on Jerry though, you know we we know how he is. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a beautiful thing if he would do it, but he say he'll write that check. I'm still waiting on him to write that check. You know what? You know what I'm saying though. Right now, we we, we having that. You remember a uh, life? One of my favorite movies. They shot it in my hometown, uh-huh. Natchez. You remember uh, yeah. Ray? Ray? Ray was having that Ray Boom Boom room, and he was talking about all of the uh-huh. good stuff. That's that's what you and I are talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be yeah, somebody yeah, breaking up yeah. that stuff. <laughs> somebody, that's somebody gonna call in and try to shoot it down though. But yeah. <laughs> but but appreciate you, bro. Oh, Thank you so. That, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, man. Good work, man. Shout out to Love you, big. Show. Appreciate you, man. Yay. <laughs> we having the raise boom boom room moment, right? You know. So, so <laughs> who's gonna be that guy? You know, they're gonna bust down the door and say, "Hey." <laughs> Y'all go to bed. Y'all got to wake up early in the morning and quit playing with yourself. You know, <laughs> what was that dude name too, by the way? I'm going to see if I can. I might, that might be one of my new drops, man. Hey, every time we have this like raise boom, boom room moment, there's always somebody that's going to break it up. But I know this guy ain't going to break it up. I got VIP. I got MJ. And then we have Mark, uh, the last one up in here. All right. So VIP from the 860, you live. Lord VIP baby, yeah. No, Lord, we we keeping the bull bull rule popping, Lord. We, we yeah, let's keep that same energy, Lord. Lord, respectfully, respectfully, Lord. Look, yeah. this is what I need Jerry to do. Jerry, Talk to me, man. you are on. Jerry, you're in your golden years. You're in your premium golden years, Jerry. Yeah. yeah. Go, go ahead, Jerry. Just put them chips all in the middle of the table. Like, look, we going all in. Yeah, I, I, but I'm I'm in a wrestling match, Lord. I don't know what I want to go all in on our defense. Do we need that added element? I believe, Lord, because you know you and I like we're, we're, we we love our boys, so we watch film. Yeah, I watched my quarterback put a dime on MG, and he dropped a touchdown pass. It was a dime, Lord. That yeah. that that touchdown that, that that he that he dropped, Lord, was a dime. Yeah. So, Lord, but I think, I really believe in 18, Lord. I think let's just swap that out and let's go all in on our defense. 
True. Yeah, like, 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 what if 18 can be our version of uh, Devontae Adams? You know what I'm saying? Because Devontae Adams wasn't a high draft pick, you know. What what round was Devontae? And I'm not – hold on, I got to preface my statement. You know how people get VIP. Uh, but yeah, I know. I'm not calling him Devontae Adams because somebody was like, Law is saying that Devontae Adams is uh, <laughs> Jaden Tober. But what round was Devontae Adams drafted? You know what I'm saying? We're we in the bull bull rule, Law, so everything is good. We're all good in the bull bull rule, Law. Hey, man, you got a lot of power, though, bro, because all you got to do, VIP, is wherever Jada is at, just walk close, and she will lose her marbles, man. <laughs> you know, it's Law, Law, she just started following me on Instagram, Law, all jokes aside. Oh, oh, I, I believe you. <laughs> Law, 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 oh, I, I, no pause intended, Law. If I get to Jada Law, Will, Will can write. He can write that check, Law. <laughs> <laughs> law, law, they call me the walk changer, Law. Oh I my God! Walk in circle, <laughs> hey man, but I don't know. Here, here's the craziest thing now. Now, now, she's she's nutter. She's nuttier than Planters Peanuts, man. She's nutty now. I ain't gonna even lie to you. But I don't get the disrespect where people are saying that she's never been uh, beautiful. You know, I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. You know, he said some one comedian said that oh, she only looked good from the neck up. Like, no, nah, Jada always been. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> but Lord, you know what it is. No, you know, it, it, Lord, yeah. Lord, people like to there. We um, since it came into this um internet age, people are internet bullies, Lord. They not okay, that's tough what that guys, is. the real person. Okay, that's what it is. So everybody could be an internet bully with a thumb or with a finger. Everybody's <laughs> an internet bully till you get punched in your face or somebody run up on you or run yeah. down on you in the streets. So yeah. the, you know, there's a million Brandons. There's a million. Um, what's his boy name? I'm not gonna call him out by name, but I'm just saying there's a million of them out here in this world, Lord. That if it yeah. wasn't for internet, they wouldn't have a life. Yeah. This, this internet has gave life and and birth some internet thugs, law. So that that's what they trolling. They want to troll law. Let them troll because Jada, we know from set it off days. Yes, I, indeed. I was, yeah, from from what was the other one? Ray Jason lyrics and some look, man. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and low down, dirty shame. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but I'm gonna say this though. Uh, I'm gonna say this though. So they said Devontae Adams was a second round draft pick, and it wasn't like in the early. I think it was like mid second rounds or later second round draft pick Devontae Adams. Now I'm not putting like, like once again. Let me preface my statements. I'm not saying that Jalen Tolbert is on the same kind of caliber of a Devontae Adams. But what I'm saying is that hey, give him opportunity, man. He's only in his second year. Give him that opportunity, Lord, because I realize right now we're in that report card. And I know Big Mike and and, 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 and DQ sat in the lab like, all right, what can I do to improve? DQ has or DQ is not – he's not with that nepotism. He's not going to play you because you have a name or a contract. You see what he did with Bell. You see what he did with, with – with Wanya, he's like, look, I don't care if, if, if my hitman is still slow in the roll. Look, man, I'm putting Wanya back in there because I saw Wanya produce. Mm -hmm. I, I see Bell producing. Yeah. So, so Lord, look, man, stop playing that. Never. Look, we can't play favoritism. Do we want to win? A, do you want to win a ship, or do you just want to just keep your star, keep shining a star every year? If you want to win a ship, Lord, you got to go all in. What what what's your final recipe before I let you go on a championship team what do we need to do you the gm for the rest of this month until deadline what will you do vip At, but my vip law i would sign somebody that we had on our radar and that's who you've been talking about patrick sartain i believe just that's his presence as a cornerback and that's not and look i, I don't want to knock gilly because i love me some gilly I love Gilly. I love his presence. I'm, but we all know Gilly doesn't run that four three like he used to. Gilly is a good is a good cornerback present. He is not that cornerback that we need to push us over the top. Yeah. So to me, as a GM, I would go because our defense is our strength. Our offense, well, I watch our offense, and let me let me bring this up, Law. Our offense of line. All, all of them are. I'm watching Zach Martin, the president, hobble around. 
Right. So I, I know that he, he needed this wrestler. Beatus, remember, Beatus just came off the same thing that Tyler went down for. He came back two weeks earlier because he know we needed him. Yeah. So he needed this rest as well. So it was, and we, our offensive line moves around, Lord. They're not stagnant, just blowing you over. They, he got them moving around. So they need this rest, Lord. I believe, I, I'm, I'm not worried about our offensive line. As long as 77 stay healthy, everybody else is Gucci. I, I'm not worried about that. So man. I think if I'm a DM, I'm, I'm putting all my chips in on my defense. All right, man. Appreciate you, man. Hey, thank you. One more thing, man. Let me hear you say it. Law, you already know, my thoughts were brought to you by You Know What Fix, and go get your picks in, Law. I won $200 again, Law. 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 Bro. Law. <laughs> I'm building up, Law. I'm almost ready to get to Dallas so me and my son can actually see a game in person, Law. So all I'm going to say from here, Law, is I'll, I'll get him and the boys. Law, I'm switching it up now, Law. And a lot of the lion is me against the world now, Law. That's my new thought process. Me against, me against the, the world, world baby. Appreciate you, VIP, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. Yes! Here we go! Here we go! Here <laughs> it's we go. VIP, man. All right. I got um, I got MJ from the 206. The conference has been locked. You in the mix. Up, Talk man? to me, man. Talk to me. What up, Law Station? What's good, bro? Yeah, my dog, VIP on the line. My dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he dog, you know. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You see your dog? <laughs> 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 what we need to do, man, by this trade deadline, or we okay with what we got, man? What's on your thoughts, man? Well, y'all got me thinking, all the fans and you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is my trade. My man made good sense. Okay, mm-hmm. this is what we'll do. Call up Denver. Okay. We're going to move, because this is going to help the Dallas defense. This is where you can put 26 back at the slot. Gill will be good, and then uh, you get – Thirteen, but this is what I'm gonna give up. You make good sense. I say, come on, Jeremy, let's do this. You know you ain't gonna pay uh, Judy, and you know y'all. Are, okay, we'll give you number two. We're gonna trade you Gilmore. I mean, we're gonna trade you uh, Gallup. Uh, what, uh, what's the big D tackle? Number ninety-six. Oh yeah, Gallimore. Gallimore. I mean Gallimore. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna trade. We're gonna give you Gallimore. <laughs> Uh, number 13, and we're going to trade that corner that we got for Miami. Okay. N- you know, know the, yeah, yeah, know yeah, the corner. corner we got for Miami? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to trade you them. we get number two in them three players. And then we'll take Judy and 13 off your hand. Because they're not going to pay Judy. You already see that. Yeah, they ain't going to pay him. Yeah, we, we can no, see the right on the wall with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then his contract in. Then, you know, now you got a 10 because Judy, like you said, is a route runner. And then now, and then you need to play at number 18. You're losing because Galloway don't have it. I'm telling y'all. Because I'm going to tell y'all in that San Diego game, before, that pass got rolled to the right. And he was about to throw that ball, and he threw it over Gallo's head. Thank God he threw it over Gallo's head. Because he did. Yeah. Number 26 was taking that to the house. Yeah. That was the interception. Woo! We got to look. That dude, he beat Galloway at his own rock, y'all. Yeah, Gallup. Yeah, he did, man. Uh, I, 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 I'll say this, though. Um we are about one or two players away. Uh, I think that we are okay until, like, yeah. I seen I seen a Forty Nine er fan say, "Hey, they got money. They got disposable income, and they because of the quarterback is on a cheap salary." Yeah, and they they are uh, in hopes of securing Patrick Sertain. Don't you know? I I might not do it live, but if the Forty Nine er fool around away to get Patrick Sertain. I'm moving furniture around in my house. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> I move yeah. something around because that that will be an ultimate, you know, good pickup for them, and especially in their scheming system. Yeah, but we need them. We need them better than they do. Right, right. We do <laughs> because of the you future. Know yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk and, to and, me. And I'm gonna say why we do because I'm gonna keep telling y'all. Y'all not listening, man. I watch football. I play corner. Number yeah. 24, y'all. He could play corner, y'all. Easy. Yes, y'all. I'm telling you. Because he's big, and it makes it harder for the – it like, he might look like he burnt. You got to throw that ball perfect to get over his head. You see what I'm saying? Now, you could do a little corner, you ain't got to worry about that. But a guy six four that run like a 4-4, four four, you know how hard it is to throw it over his head? And he played corner before. Y'all talking about putting him in? No. You can put him at corner, and he'll do good. The dude know how to tackle. The guy is smart. But Dan Quinn ain't playing. I mean, I, I think I'm that like, he's, at this I, point, I, got I, to be in the doghouse. That's the only reason why he's not out there. I don't the know field. why the yeah. doghouse going to lose us a lot of games. I don't like, know what he did. He, coach, he did coaches, something, The coach is getting their feeling. Because you know what it probably is? He probably okay. on that line. He probably... I'm telling you, if I hold up, I'm cussing out of, uh, uh, the Green Bay cornerback coach out. Man, put me in the fucking game. I can't yeah. help. Yeah. Fuck, I played last year. <laughs> oh, man, man, fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Excuse right. my French on her. But yeah. they put me in the dog, huh? Yeah, they probably, they probably, they're, they're probably what it is. Team. I can't help my team standing on the sideline. Man, you right, you know man. What I'm look, look, I got, I got no rebuttal to that, bro. One more word before I let you go. What you got? Oh, and then uh, on the offensive line, they just gotta get ready. But that, uh, but uh, but 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 uh, the coach, Mc- come on, coach. Solari. Now we for you. Come on, coach. Are oh, you talking about Solari? Or are you talking about uh, Coach Mike McCarthy? I'm talking about Mike McCarthy. McCarthy. Mike okay. McCarthy. Mm-hmm. You gotta call better plays. Stop running twenty up the middle. He only need fifteen carries. And like five or six passes. I don't want you to see him running up the middle. Run number forty. You got all these weapons, and you doing a you doing a killing more on me, bro. Mm. Stop doing that, man. Play the boys the right way. The offense could be explosive. And the dude said, right, let Dak Prescott play, man. Stop playing this scary ball. Release the hounds. You, play, <laughs> you lose. No doubt, man. I appreciate you on your point there, bro. Appreciate it's you, man. Loop. Salute, man. Nature. Hey, wait, and I got to get shout out to all my guys. 100 Grand, VIP, Queen, and uh, we love Brandon, too. He's a debater, so. <laughs> no doubt, man. Appreciate you, man. SMJ, <laughs> man. Pre- appreciate it, man. Um, I got a uh, good call, too. Well, you know, good call. All right, uh, I got Mark for the 424. You're live on The Nation. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, Lars Mark? Uh, how are you, sir? Doing great, man. The enlightened one. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me, man. Enlighten us, I man. I appreciate you. So appreciate you. I have a few uh, things. First of all, your uh, your final word yesterday was crazy. My favorite part was the Magneto uh, reference about us oh, yeah. uh, banding together and starting a revolution as opposed to conforming. Yeah. I'm trying to make people like us and then just make them respect us through our play on the field and through how we carry ourselves uh-huh. uh, through our games, especially games we're supposed to win, are supposed to be measuring stick games. We show up and show out. Um, yeah. uh, as far as potential trades, I'm looking in a different direction. I know this our Mike McCarthy wants to be a power run team. Um, so I'm making a phone call to the Titans and see if, if they'll offload uh, King Henry and for what. Uh, at least kick the tires and see if it's a it's a possibility. I know that the jet, the Giants are in division, so they probably won't give us Saquon. But Mm-mm. I would call them too just to see. Just to uh, kick, kick the can, yeah, kick down. the tire down. And then I know that you know that's we will uh, that Saquon was saying. I don't want to be traded. Bull sugar. We know <laughs> that's just no. politician Saquon. You know, I think that Saquon and Parsons they they on the phone together. Like man, yeah, man. You know, hey, we would love to see you over here in the silver and blue, man. We would love to see you over Absolutely. here, X, Y, and Z. You know. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure his bag's already packed. I and mean, his agent probably been on the phone, and I'm pretty sure he ran down some potential moves mm-hmm. that could happen. So Saquon is 
fully aware, but he did the diplomatic thing. He said, I don't want to be traded, and then winked at the same time. Like, I don't want to be traded. Don't trade for me. I want to be here. They, they lose They lose this weekend to my guy Big Simple in the chat. They lose this weekend. Oh, he yeah, they might as well cut their losses, <laughs> get something out of it, get something out of it because he's going to be a free man next year. So they might as well say, all right, well, we can get at least a third or a fourth, and, uh, and, and y'all take on the rest of whatever y'all is owed to him. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer, you know. Yeah, and I'm looking at the – I like the Devontae Adams move for one for a big reason. He's a technical route runner, and in Mike McCarthy's West Coast offense, all of the receivers need to be technical, technically sound as far as route running go. Back, back foot hit the ground. They need to be coming out of their break or at least even with the DB. Michael Gallup struggled with that since he was at Colorado State, so – he doesn't fit in this offense. Not a bad receiver, just a bad fit scheme wise for his skill set. Right. Uh, we can't just run him up the seam or run him up the sideline just so we can, like, you know, do the things that work for him the best. I do see him. We should be using him more inside the twenties. But uh, yeah. I think that that move for either Judy or for Devontae makes more sense because they're exceptional route runners, and that's why Amari thrived here because he's so good at getting in and out of his breaks. He gave Dak a quick and easy target. So, and that opened everything else up. And I think we kind of got away from that uh, with Amari's departure because every no, nobody else, even CD isn't a technical route runner. He's just really good at getting open. But sometimes it's like a little bit more freestyle than it is him lining up and just, you know, uh, executing against the DB and giving Dak a quick target. No um, doubt. And then the very last thing I want to see us do if we don't get a running back is get back to our uh, stretch run. Like we yeah. were a good zone running team. And that's what Tony Pollard is designed for. I don't understand why we run in traps and powers. Because you got you got you got a different at. you got a different philosopher in there. You know, not only did yeah. we did wholesale changes of getting rid of Doug Nussmeyer and and uh, what's the kid mm-hmm. name uh, Kellen Moore, but Philbin is gone. So those principles mm-hmm. are gone too. So this trap and this uh, uh, you know pull that we do mm-hmm. is all yeah, Solari. Yeah, yeah. So you seeing. Your um, your guard pulling out to the side, you know, and getting in front of people. You seeing your 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 damn tackle squeezing inside, you know, pulling inside, yeah. and and the uh, uh, the opposing team is don't know which gap to shoot now because in his mindset he's supposed to be technically sound to go up against Tyron. Now he's seeing Tyler, you know, and and Tyler. He's doing good, but his hands are late because he's being pulled. His hands oh. are late, which which causing him to have uh, influx on uh, on false starts. You seen him on do that and influx of holding calls because he's yeah. late with his jab. So I'm looking at those things, and I'm not even O line guy, right? So when I'm mm-hmm. looking at those things, I'm sitting like, oh, we got away with that. His hands to the outside, mm-hmm. and the, and he saw yeah. the uh, 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 shoulders not square. You know, you want to keep your shoulders square. The principles uh, of off- offensive linemen. Now you're seeing those things not mm-hmm. there. And we got away with that. We got away with this one, you know. So I'm sitting there like, okay, yeah, sure. when do this all improve? Only thing that we can say is hope that these guys can get it <laughs> together on this uh, bye week. Since it's going to be two weeks since we see these boys play again, hopefully they rest yeah. up and they be ready to go. That's the only thing I can do from here, Mark. Yeah, I get it. And the, my only pushback to that is that Schottenheimer is a – is a zone run guy. Yeah. He runs powers, but out of yeah. the zone run like concept. So I want mm-hmm. to see him have more of an imprint on our run game at, when it comes to that sort of thing, because if we can get back to that, that's where we will see uh TP really take off. And also it'll help with, uh, with Dowdle as well. Cause he's a downhill one cut runner. And you getting two guys that, you know, don't, don't do a whole lot of dancing in the backfield. You giving them clear, run lanes right away so that they don't matter if the, the the guard gets up to the linebacker, they'll make him miss and then get into space. So I want to see us use a little bit more of that. Dak is also really good off play action when it comes to zone. Well. And you know what I would do, though? You know what I would do, mm-hmm. though, before I let you go, Mark? Mm-hmm. If Mike McCarthy had this in him, call a coaches only meeting, mm-hmm. and he said, hey, you know, I'm getting my ass chewed out on just trying to keep up with everything. Schottenheimer, it wasn't that long ago from you calling plays. I haven't called plays in a minute. 
I need for you to step in and help me out with concepts. I need for you to step in and help me out on adjustments more, you know, although I'm the play caller, but I'm going to have to relinquish my power to allow you to step in, you know, and that's what leaders mm-hmm. supposed to do. Leader, leaders supposed to be able to delegate. And that is one of the, um, the, the things that, that most people learn in business school, business law is to learn how to, to delegate. And if Mike McCarthy can delegate his responsibilities and shift it, not saying that he's running away from it, but give it to uh, uh, Schottenheimer and say, hey, time has escaped me. I need for you to help a brother out, you know, HBO a brother, you know. And, and if that can happen, then we're on the right page. Because it may be another year or two years before Mike McCarthy get into the proper rhythm and grooves of things, in my opinion. Yeah, one hundred percent. I I agree with you on that. Even if he just gave Schottenheimer the the ability to put the game plan together, yeah. and he still called the play based on what he saw. Yeah. I think that would help us a lot too. Because Schottenheimer had uh, rough cooking, cooking, yeah, cooking um, <laughs> until until he uh, he got kind of one dimensional and fell in love with like his plays and stopped building towards the scheme of the team he was playing against. But yeah, I, I appreciate your time log in, man. Uh, Always, as always, another great show, and uh, thanks for having me on. Man. No great. doubt, man. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I'm glad Mark, the enlightened one, I got him down as that, uh, understood my thought track on us becoming the villain. Because one can argue, one can literally argue that Magneto was right over Charles Xavier, you know. Instead of Magneto said, hey, they wish to cure us. They want to change us. It's okay to be the beast. It's okay to have your skin to be scaly. It's okay for you to have the ability to shape and shift into certain sizes. But they wanted everybody to take the shot or the jab so that everybody could be uniform. And Professor X was like, yeah, let's conform. But we can still keep our powers but let us find a middle ground. Let me have my own facility in Mutant Island, whatever it was. But Charles was like, bump all of that. We are the superior ones. Not Charles, but Magneto was like, bump all that. We are the superior ones. Let us let us stand and fight for what's ours, you know. And if the four-ladder, the three-ladder network going to use the Cowboys for clicks and content, and we supposed to be just taking this on the chin, taking this left and right, and be docile, be the sheep. No, man, you got you powerful. It's powerful, Albert. You know you got power, James. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I use that as that part of it, and then uh, I use the uh, Thanos part of it, other uh, of the other movie, of him, you know, saying that hey. It's my turn to take over, you know. But people are like, ah, cringy, you know, cringe. You know, Cowboys are not going to be appeared to be the villains. We're the America's team. We, we are the ones, you know what I'm saying, for the land of the free, the home of the brave. We're we supposed to be, it would be X, Y, and Z. Well, they, they call us the America's team, but they for dog sure don't treat us like one. Nine times out of ten, if it's a flag, it's on us. They don't give us no favors. Oh, man, we play on every Thanksgiving, blah, blah, blah. Bull sugar. So do the Lions. They don't treat us like America's team. Ah, oh, y'all America's team. Y'all haven't won. And all... Well, let us be the villain then. Let us Thanos snap, snap this thing around. You know, Thanos won that first time around. The villain, they, they hit me up with all type of, well, the villain never win. Shoot. <laughs> There's a thing called. Big stick policy, too. There's a thing called also Hiroshima. You think the people over at Hiroshima say, yeah, America's nice. You, you don't think they ain't trying to, well, I'm talking too much. <laughs> you think they thinking glory of us? <laughs> they, we erased the whole. Oh, boy, I'm talking too much. Come on, y'all. I got Mr. Daniels, then I have the 765. Y'all the last two. Mr. Daniels, you're live on the nation from the 505. Come on, stars. We be in. Uh, I think that's how you say. Me, yeah, 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 yeah. We be in. <laughs> What's good, man? <laughs> hey, so 
I've been watching the three letter networks, four letter networks. Uh huh. And I've been watching ever since Parsons said, Hey, everyone out there needs to be fair. You're going to talk about my Cowboys. You got to talk about everyone with the same energy. Yeah. And you know what? All I heard from all of them was, Oh, well, oh, you know what, Michael? We have no problem with you. We have, we think you're a great player. You know, it's just that it's the Dallas Cowboys. They're missing it. They're saying, yeah. yo, be fair. Y'all hate him. Yeah. What? They're behaving now. Yeah. I actually saw a clip where they were asking themselves, hey, maybe that Chargers QB isn't as good as Dak. Maybe, maybe not. And you know what? I started thinking about it, and I've been watching since the Tony Romo era. Yeah. I have never seen a player go over to every single news person, call them all out, and all of them got scared. Scared. And now they all behave. They behave now. They they tito they tiptoeing around that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know and you know what? They this is what Micah needs to learn. Micah is that dude. You know what they were all saying? They they still kept with the whole well, he's basically Lawrence Taylor. You know, they were talking to him, about him with Joey Bosa and all of them, mm-hmm. and they were like, but this guy's built different. Mm-hmm. This guy is different, right? And you know what? I, that made me start believing in my Cowboys because that Chargers game showed me something very beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was a tough game. It was a hard game. And you know what? Dak had to get his head out of his butt multiple times yeah. and just decide he was not going to lose that game. He was even going to run because he could not lose that game. Yep. And I love that because because Kellen Moore is over there, man. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, who, like as a com- that's, that is a must-win game for a competitor. Yeah. Is it not a loss? Yeah, it's right. Like, it, you're right. It, it, yeah. When you see when you see a homie on the other side, you got to tell him, yo, you were supposed to stay here, but you messed it up. Now you're going to get this business. And you know what? Dak was decided I was not. Dak said he was not going to lose against Kellen Moore. To the point where he was going to run, like we haven't seen him run in three years. Yep, yep, he, he and ran. So you know and, yep, that and they were bringing that, that up too. Fight, man. And, and you know what? Now that showed me the fight that we needed. It, it showed the fight, and then also it would make the defense play on us. Because what if he do take it and run it? You know, <laughs> what if he do? What if he do? Going to see that linebacker? But that linebacker is not going to be running up with Cook if he's going to be taking if he's going to be running straight through right there, right? Facts. We had Fred Warner running all the way to running all the way down the field because he knew that Dak was going to stay home. If he he can't run like that if he keeps seeing Dak run like this. I love that that game. Nothing came easy. It was a it was hard the entire time, and we fought and we won. Well, we needed to see that fight from our Cowboys after the 49ers. That's what hurt us. It was that we saw the we we saw the team and they looked like the teams. The Cowboys started looking against the 49ers the same way we looked, the same way the other, the other teams looked when we were whooping on them. They right. gave up. They gave up, they yeah. Up. Man, and they showed fight. And now Micah has to do the same thing with the Cowboys that he did to the media. Act yeah. right. Be yeah. yourself. Know who you are. You know what? Dak is not a fool. You see, Dak needs to look at himself right now. Hey, this is a hard month. People forget that this is a hard month for Jack, yo. Like, losing a brother, I lost a brother. You can, like, that doesn't go away from you. Every year, it gets harder. Every year, that time of year comes oh, yeah. around. Oh, yeah. And yeah. he fought. He fought. Yeah. Dad, keep fighting, man. If no Dad's listening, I want him to know, keep fighting. He's that mm-hmm. dog. But yeah. you know what? Micah's leading this team now. This is Micah's team. Well, hey, let let him let him do his thing, man. I appreciate you for calling in from the five oh five, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Good call from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the parts that we were able to hear, man, was spitting facts. You know what I'm saying? Out of all of the languages in the world, he selected and he chose to speak facts. You know, so that's what he was doing, and we like to hear that. We love to hear the facts. Dak Prescott, at the end of the day. Be the reason that we won the game. Don't be the reason that we lost. And if you have that mindset, and if even if you fall, get up, trying to land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. That's the mentality that he got to live with. He going through his progressions. Oh, snap, I missed that dude. 
He ain't finna get back open. Take him with your legs. Run. Run the ball. And that's what we've been yelling at him to do through at our TVs, right? Run! We've been yelling at the TV. Run like he can hear us. So I said, and I meant what I said. The first few weeks, it looked like the dude was driving the car with mom and them in the car. Drive freely, man. Take the seatbelt off. You don't like the seatbelt on, take the seatbelt off. Put one hand on the steering wheel. Be comfortable with what you're operating. Let's go. I got the 765. You're live on the nation. Brought to you by Prize Picks. You in the mix. Talk to me. How's it going, Law? Going great. Going great. Hey, man. First off, just want to say thank you for everything that you do. I've been watching for a little over a year, and I really respect everything and your motivation, especially at the end of your videos. So appreciate shout it. out to you. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, bro. Trade proposal. What if we were to take Tim Williams and MG for Singleton and PS2 and a third round? What are your thoughts on that? Who, who's the other guy? Singleton? Who, who's that? Yeah, Alex Singleton, uh, linebacker off of Denver. Denver? Okay. Um, to get something, you got to give something. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I know we want to keep Sam Williams. Uh, we want to keep some of our guys, but. In order to receive, sometimes you got to give. And, yeah, I, I would take that. I, I would take Sertan over Sam Williams because of, their, uh, because of what he will bring to the table. I think that we can get some of Sam Williams' type of production out of Dorrance Armstrong or Fowler. So, yeah, the, and the uh, Singleton right, kid, uh, to be fair, I haven't looked up his tape, so I don't know much on him. He's not bad. I do think that he'd be a better replacement than LVE. Okay, he better replacement than LVE. I, I can't look, look. I can't really wait until I see Evans in this particular scheme because I think he's a downhill guy. Yeah. I think that he's a willing tackler. Yeah. My biggest thing with LVE is that you don't see the animosity anymore. You know what I'm saying? You don't see he holds back. You don't see him try to chase down people anymore. It's like he knows he knows somebody's coming. You see him coming, and he's like, mm -hmm. okay, let's wait and see what's gonna go on. He doesn't chase him. He yeah. doesn't come out there and smash him. Like, he had an opportunity uh, to put uh, what's-his-face on his ass, uh, the quarterback uh, yeah. from the from the 49ers. He had, a, he had yeah. an opportunity he had to put him on his ass, and it's like everybody's scared to hit quarterbacks. Now, I get it. Yeah. I completely get you don't want that penalty, but if we were to go out there, and let's say Micah Parsons, even if it is an illegal hit, you go out there the very first play and you put that quarterback on their damn ass, yeah. they are going to be terrified the entire night. Yeah. Terrified. Uh, li li linebackers, player. linebackers are tone setters. You know that one big hit can can change the whole complexity of the game, especially when you are a linebacker with that type of uh, hit power. And when LVE over the last few years been a polite linebacker, nobody likes that. We want yeah. the linebacker to be yeah. nasty. Yeah. We need the Ray Lewis of the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can go down the list, man. All Super Bowl teams done had at least that one wild, crazy linebacker that, that goes, you know, crazy when they, when they hit you, you know. And we just been avoided of that area of having that crazy linebacker to make you pay. Completely agree. Yeah. Second thing, mm -hmm. I've messaged, I think I've commented, uh, I don't think I've ever – um, sent you a super chat or anything, so I apologize. But no, he's good. Um, what do you think about, and I don't mean all the time because we know we need him on defense, is it even possible to try and put Micah Parsons as running back in, in red zone situations? I mean, he, he'll be your fastest running back on the team, right? He's a 4-3 guy. Well, not only the fastest. <laughs> he wouldn't only be the fastest, but he would also be able to penetrate whatever defensive line. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he would be like the Zeke power hitter that we would need in the red zone. I mean, I mean even if it's only for two plays, three plays, maybe, you know, Rico can't get in there. Somebody, Hunter, I, I don't know why we're not using Hunter. It makes no absolute sense. But... Um, I feel like Micah Parsons could penetrate any defensive line in the league in a red zone situation. Here, here, here's two things, you know, and, and I will only do that 
if it's an elimination game, right? You win, you win, or there's no tomorrow. But as long as there's mm-hmm. tomorrow, as long as there's like a you know team is still in the playoff race, I wouldn't do that, right? We would definitely do that. But if it's Super Bowl or no tomorrow, then yeah, you know I'll play around with that. And the other thing would be is that it would not be an element of surprise because we can't sneak anything around Cowboys land. You know, <laughs> there's always cameras. There's always a media leak that's going to leak out. We've seen Parsons getting offensive snaps, you know, so there, there's no element of surprise with it. And unfortunately, um, it's going to be a hard pass for me to say if, if we can do that anytime during the season. But if some magical way, magical way that we go to the playoff and is when you in or type of thing i wouldn't mind seeing parsons doing a travis henry impression you know what i'm saying hunter i meant to say travis hunter oh, impression. I, you I, know I, like like I, like what my guy doing I, I don't think they, yeah i just don't think they would anybody would see it coming right I mean, we, I mean i know he talked about the whole tight end thing but i feel like that would be a waste for him put him back at the running back let him hit people yeah soften him up but um Another thing, what about, so, Sam Williams and MG for Devontae Adams and a third round. What about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I would do that. And, of course, we lose out a little bit on the defensive side, but we're game, you know. Uh, also, what about this? If you can't get Adams because of the price tag too high and the age of, uh, of him is too high, what about Hunter Renfro? You know, he's a dynamic uh, route runner guy, and I think that he would fit well within the confines of what Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott like, right? Have you seen his tape? I agree, but do you think he has a higher ceiling or more potential than if we say just elevate Tolbert? That's a good question. I mean, like, to- Tolbert's like, ceiling is. We have Tolbert sitting yeah, yeah. on the bench yeah, yeah, for true. no reason. Michael Gallup should not be playing right now. I don't think they, I honestly don't feel that he's ready. You can tell he's kind of, he's not jumping as high as he was. Nowhere yeah. near as high as he was jumping before. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. can tell he's scared. He's, I'm not going to say he's scared, but you can tell he's iffy about get, going up and jumping up high in those elevate in those yeah. contested catches. You can tell he's, he's not, uh-huh. he's not there yet. Yeah. Uh, um, so why not I, yeah. just, Mm. Elevate Tolbert, and then get rid of MG and a and a pick for something that we could actually use, like you said, whether on defense or a running back, something of that nature. We don't need Tolbert sitting on the bench. True, true. But I, I I've I've seen Hunter Renfro catch 103 receptions before, a thousand yard receiving a uh, year. You know what I'm saying, and nine touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I, but but the Tolbert, we don't know, right? We don't know. And, and, and I'm thinking that now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think that even Gallup had that type of a season, 103 receptions and 1,000 yards in nine tubs, right? So, yeah, no, I think Hunter Renfro will be an upgrade at that spot. And then, you know, <laughs> even though he's 5'10", you know, say 180 pounds, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, hey, hey, hey! It's just what it is, you know. Uh, I, I think that if he on a trading block, he can nice. actually replace Gallup. Like you, Gallup's a big dude. He's really well in contested catches. Like he's not afraid to to knock somebody out of the way. You know what I'm saying? We need somebody. We need somebody that's not going to be afraid, like a Des Bryant, that's, that's not afraid to put somebody on their ass for getting in his face. True, we do need that. Damn, you're right. Man, you bring some good stuff, you, but man. But I feel like football has gotten soft over the years. <laughs> yeah, it did get soft, man. What's your name so I can lock you in, fam? It's Ricky. Ricky? Yeah. All right, Cowboys Ricky, man. I appreciate you for calling in, man. And, uh, hey, enjoy your Friday. Let's go, bro. You too, man. Thank you, everybody. Let's go, Cowboys. We're going to shit on these people next uh, and just coming up the next game, all right? Yeah, let's shit on everybody them, man. Appreciate you, man. Have a great day. Thank you. Good call from him, man. Uh, that's Cowboys Ricky, you know. Uh, not Bobby, but Ricky. Cowboys Ricky. Uh, and let's go, man. We're going to win this bye week, man. How we win? Okay. We need uh, for... <laughs> 
<laughs> we need for the uh, Eagles to lose and and and, and the 49ers to lose. You know, I, I was telling my brother that uh, the other night. And what we're going to do here is I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Let me go over the Super Chats now. And I really thank y'all for the support. And I thank y'all for what, for what all y'all do for the nation. You guys don't do a little things. Y'all do a lot of things for the nation. And I really appreciate that, uh, uh, what y'all do. And um, Bad says, uh, would you trade a third round pick for Saquon Barkley? Uh, that will be a yes for Saquon Barkley. You know, although, you know, we got TP, we got uh, um, Rico Dido. But let's be real. Don't y'all be hitting me saying that, man, Rico Dido is just as good as Saquon. No, no, no. <laughs> we a better team, you know, and F those picks for next season. You know, that's how I would look at it. Like, name me the pick that we are really salivating over right now, you know, from last year or from this year. You know, what picks are we really salivating over? You know, shout out to Mozzie. I'm not putting him in front of the bus or under the bus. What schoolmaker been doing? You know, Overshawn, he showed us a little bit in preseason. Right, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, all right. It, it, of course, you got to pay, and this just would be a short-term thing, but, hey, sometimes you need to do that. Uh, Sanjay, I think I already read that one, uh, and I appreciate you for your 999. Press says, uh, Law, if they can pull this off, OMG, I didn't really hate the Cowboys. I read that one. Shout out to you. Brad Day for three months silver level. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for your love. And then also for the four ninety nine for your mind. Jerry wants to win it his way. She ain't lying. Um, True Forley, thank you again for the 26th gold member. Appreciate you. Uh, we are dreaming if we think Jerry would ever do the right thing for us. He So Burdette is breaking up the boom boom room over here. But, yeah, you're right. My guy, D. Webb, for the $2 holla. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for your support. He says, Gallup for Zeke back straight up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bring Zeke back. No, 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 no. Shout out to Zeke, though. Shout out to Ezekiel Elliott. And I'm I'm hearing that uh, Kendrick Bourne of the Patriots is, is on the trading block. So that will be kind of, you know, Weird to have Kendrick Bourne and Gallup and all of that going on. So, shout out to them. Uh, and Sanjay says, uh, I would trade target. I would target CB Cameron Dan Dantzler from the Vikings. He is a Darius Slay 2.0. And uh, shout out to Mississippi State. I will have to look at more tape on Cam Dantzler. Is he related to the one that used to play here? Y'all let me know. Are they related? You know, blood ties. We probably do something with that. But it is what it is uh, in that particular world there. Um, I see you down there. Somebody said, uh, I think D-Law says he would bring back Cedric Wilson. That That is something that we can think about. Uh, D-Webb says, go all in on D. Take Dak versus the NFC QBs. Take Dak versus the other NFC QBs. Yeah, I, defense win championships. Defense win championships. I'll rock with that any day. Any day, defense win championships. Uh, Robinson says, for the 199 for your mind. Let me give him. Robinson says, what's up, Law? Appreciate you. <clears throat> now, sometimes that water go down the wrong pipe. Woo! All right. <clears throat> There's no commercial breaks over here, so I get a little parsh. All right, I got Chris214. Do you think Dak is embracing the... Do, do you think Dak will embrace the villain role? Or he said, do you think Dak is embracing the villain role, uh, Chris214? It, it don't matter. It don't matter. He's, he's going to be painted as the villain anyhow. 
Dak is going to be painted as the villain anyhow. So regardless of whether he like it or not, he's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. Uh, Dirty Sanchez says, Diggs, Bland, and Sertan, I would love to see the no-fly zone here next year. Yeah, that's a future pick. Yes, Dirty. Yeah, you're right. I would rather have James Conner in his red zone production. Yes. I could live with giving a one for Saquon DC for life. No. No, no, no. I wouldn't give up a one for Saquon Barkley. <clears throat> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't I wouldn't give up a one. No, I wouldn't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. As 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 Giants. I wouldn't live with that. No, 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 no. Um, <clears throat> Cooper says, I would rather have James Conner in his red zone production. They had to give me um, fourth or fifth round draft pick for that. You know, I wouldn't give up too much for James Conner. I get with what you're saying. He's a physical runner, wonderful story, unique story. He's a downhill guy. Yeah, he, he'll bring a lot to the table. DC for Life says, I could live with, yeah, I read that one. And then Hernandez says, let's go for King Henry and Patrick Sertain. Greetings from Mexico. Appreciate you 100 uh, for that. Um, <clears throat> do we have another super chat? Do we have another one? Let me refresh. Here we go. That was you for 129 MX. Okay, appreciate you for your support. All of that is fine and dandy. A little later on tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we will have not the final word, but we will have the round table. You know what I'm saying? And um, there will be a great showcasing of all of us. It will be Vach, of course, uh, one of the leading YouTubers out there. Of course, you see me. We'll be having uh, a great conversations with that. Foots the King. Shout out and salute to him. We will be having also Okoye Media. Salute to him. Film Breakdown Guru. And then Skywalker Steel Production King over here on the round table a little later on tonight. Uh, so stay tuned. Turn your notifications on, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls around the world and we will um <clears throat> have a great day uh talking about the cowboys leading into the bye week and we'll go over anything and everything that you guys would want to talk about uh along that process and, and hopefully we'll be able to uh give you guys our mid reviews uh who who stood out these sorts of things and and trade possibilities what this team would look like what we need to do far as the second half of the season, what have you, uh, or getting out of the first quarter of the season, basically. And we got, what, three more quarters to go through. And uh, hopefully, you know, the Cowboys will will remain on an upward pattern of what we've been doing since we have the great Mike McCarthy and the great Dan Quinn in the building, right? Opposed to what we had in the past. I get it. A lot of people may have their reservations on this team, and that's okay. Let me get some fire emojis on the way out. The round table tonight. So y'all be sure to check out our pages. Y'all be sure to check your notification bells and represent. On a great Friday afternoon, whereas we giving you guys unbelievable dedication for the nation. We're seeking liberation, by the way. The four ladder, the three ladder networks, they wish to cure us, right? They hope to change us. They want to rip you down and you down. They want to say you are delusional. But I say we are the cure. We are the mighty. We are the movement of the needle. We are the real ones. They are pretending 
They are taking up our space. They seen what we did. They took their likeness. They took their inf influential, influential power. You know, they took all of that. Their wisdom and understanding and knowledge of the game from the perspective of being superstars. And they took their space over here on the YouTube. They did. That's why you see Stephen A. Smith over here on YouTube. Shea Sharp on YouTube. But I know for sure that people like them because they on national TV. Y'all like us because y'all know y'all can get the real. Even when we mess up, y'all come and y'all still enjoy this platform. We are more tangible. We will read out your super chats. We will call out your name. Ain't that right, Ben? T Jack 321. T, appreciate you. Bayshawn, C Rax, Trace. So they hogging up the space over here. They took what we do and they spread it around and they watering it down. And that's okay, James. That is right. Sugar Daddy One, Sheila Neal. They would never call y'all out. But people, millions of followers that they will obtain. But nothing is like the movement of the community. Nothing like watching us grow. Nothing like knowing that, hey, we're doing it the right way, getting it out of the mud. So when we see those people starting their YouTube pages, starting their content creation, that's okay but understand that they can always imitate but they never they never can be us they never can be us they can imitation is the greatest form of flat of flattery right that's how i say that we are the best over here we spit the real over here they fake and phony over there So they wish to be us, and they double dipping now, and the grind is necessary. That means that that let us know that we are doing something marvelous, that we are doing something impactful, and we can't be bought, and we will not be sold for views, and for clickbaits, and for the attention. Because y'all know when we lose, y'all get realness from us. Y'all know when we win, you get realness from us. Y'all know when it's a draw, you get realness from us. Y'all know that even when you see those who despise us and spit upon us, mock us, troll us, that they know that they are also welcomed here. Because we are the ones the overlooked ones, but most importantly, the real ones. So write this down, ladies and gentlemen, and apply it to your heart, soul, and mind. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad that you don't get tired and it makes you hold everything tawdry and cheap, if life itself seems empty and useless without it and all that you scheme and dream is about it, if you will gladly go out there and sweat for it and fret for it and plan to lose all terror of your mind, if you would simply go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength and scargacity with faith, hope and confidence and stern pertinacity if neither cold, private or famish of fame or the sickness of your body or brain if dogged and grim and besiege and beset with the help of almighty you will get it don't go get that watered down content over there don't don't shoot us down because we don't get millions and millions upon views don't take away our message because they're trying to drown us out 
by taking their powers from the four ladder, three ladder networks and sowing it over here on the independent platform and yell out they're independent. But when actuality, they are being funneled in through ESPN. Woo! They are being funneled through Colin Cowherd. They are being funneled to say certain things behind networks to get their opinions and voice heard, to drown us out. Don't let them choke us out and drown us out, ladies and gentlemen. Know that our message, our voice is authentic, it's real. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. Ooh, my guy Swarpio said it right. Puppet strings attached. Woo! Woo, man! I thought I was all ready to go. Oh my goodness, I got enough time. Ooh, wait, let me let me just touch on that right quick. Oh, let me touch on that right quick. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! What Swarpio said is right. Puppet strings attach. I'm independent. I'm independent. But then you, then you open it up a little bit and you know a little something. Nah, they ain't, they ain't that independent. They're trying to be independent and they're drowning out those that are. They are getting in front of our recommendations. They are what you call double dipping. N nobody like a chip that's been broken off of and then dip back into the sauce again. They drowning out the independent artists over here. They are. And they'll throw money at people and say, join our team. And I'm not trying to get mad at anybody for taking the bag. I get it, you know. But that's what they're doing. That's the tactics that they are doing. Every tub must still sit on his own bottom. Don't let them take. Woo, man, it goes. Oh, my goodness, it hit me. Oh, it hit me up even more. You see, everybody hated Magneto. And the storyline was did just that on that movie. You see, Jean, she was always the phoenix. She always had those superpowers inside. Charles Xavier, he was like, you know, I got to use her too, but I don't want her to become who she really is. But Charles Xavier play with her mind and hid her potential. Magneto was like, no, you got unbelievable potential. You got unbelievable gifts. You are created to be just that. How many Jean Greys are out there? How many Magnetos are out there? How many Juggernauts are out there? You see, they painted to be the villains. When in actuality, they are the good ones. Real talk. Martin Luther King, he had the dream. I'm talking a little too much. But I'm going to say this. He had the dream, but he realized. He said, man, you know what? Fred last, Fred last. And somebody hit him with a brick. And he looked over and said, hey, man, go grab that man who hit me with that brick. <laughs> and then at the end, before they assassinated him, <laughs> He was like, maybe I need to be like Michael Max. I need to join the other side. <laughs> Let me quit talking with y'all. But hey, independent is the way, baby. I appreciate y'all. Let's get it. DC for life, not for short. Damn. Damn. We about, baby. <laughs> Give me my theme music. Come on. Let's get it. That's all I want to do though, basically. We just want to run it up. 
Come on. Yeah. Man, I, uh. I've been really in the field. I don't rush, I love the feel. Lately, I just wanna run it up. Don't need no deals, I make the deal. Have to take it to a meal. Lately, I just wanna run it up. Yeah. They wish to cure us. Time to check the song. Lately, I just wanna run it up. condition called Homo Sapiens. They have their weapons. We have ours. We will strike with a vengeance and a fury that this world has never witnessed. And if any mutants stand in our way, we will use this poison against them. We shall go to Alcatraz Island. Take control of the cure and destroy its source. And then nothing can stop us. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. And as long as there are those that remember what was, there will always be those that are unable to accept what can be. They will resist. Yep, we're all kinds of stubborn. I'm thankful. Because now, I know what I must do. I will shred this universe down to its last atom. And then, with the stones you've collected for me, create a new one, teeming with life, that knows not what it has lost, but only what it is. You could not live with your own failure. <laughs> Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We are out of here, man. Y'all be sure to tune in a little later on tonight as we get on up out of here, baby. If I offended anyone, charge it to my head, not my heart. Yo, come on. The longest outro in the land. 
Come on. Until next time, no need to say DC for life. If you only knew the power